Hello and welcome back to Linear Algebra. And before we start, I want to thank all the nice people who support this channel on Steady, via PayPal or by other means. Now, today's part 4 is the last part in our introduction, where we talk about vectors in R2. More precisely, today we will talk about lines in R2. This is not a complicated topic, but it will be helpful for other topics later. Therefore, let's immediately start with the first case for a line in the plane, which would be a line through the origin. And maybe from now on, let's call the line capital L. Of course, the visualization is very simple. Here we have the plane and here we have a line. So the line just gives one direction in our space and therefore it can be described with one vector. For example, we take this vector here and call it A. And as always, this means we have two components A1, A2. So you see, the only important thing here is that A is not the zero vector. Then you know we are able to stretch or scale this vector with a factor lambda. And of course, this lambda is just an element in R. And then you see, when we go through all possible real numbers here, we span the whole line. And therefore, we can describe the line L with this set here. More precisely, we would say this is the set of all vectors V that fulfill that they are given in the form lambda times A. And then we are finished, the line L is described with this set. So you see, we only have to put in one vector for the direction. However, another possibility would be to take a vector that is orthogonal to A. So you already know, we need the inner product to talk about orthogonality. So for the moment, let's call this new vector here simply n. And now what you should see is, this n is perpendicular to the whole line L. Hence, this is an alternative description for the line L. So we only need a so-called normal vector n to define this set. More precisely, we would say, this is the set of all vectors v, with the property that the inner product of n with v is exactly zero. Because this is what orthogonal means. Okay, that might be helpful to look at an example. So we just take a normal vector n and then we define the line L. For example, let's take this vector here, which should be 3 minus 1. Hence, then the line L should look like this. Now, for the set description, we already know what to do. We write down L as V in R2, with the property that 3 minus 1 with V in the inner product is equal to 0. Okay, so maybe you are used to the variables X and Y for the coordinates. Therefore, instead of V, we could also write X, Y. And then we can just simplify the inner product on the right hand side. So don't forget, this is the standard inner product, so we multiply 3 with x and minus 1 with y and then add them. Hence, we can write the equation as y is equal to 3x. And there you see, this is how you would describe this line as the graph of a function. So I would say everything fits nicely and therefore we are ready for the second case. This is the general case where the line does not have to go through the origin. Also there, we should start with a visualization. So here we have the plane again and maybe one line here. And now you could say this line is translated from the origin to this point here. Then this translation is given by a vector p. This shouldn't be a problem for us because we know the vector addition. More concretely, this means when we take another point here on the line and describe this with a vector v, then we know when we form the vector addition of minus p plus v, we have a vector in the direction of the line. So don't forget, this here represents the vector v minus p. And you see, no matter which point v we choose on the line, this vector always shows in the direction of the line l. And therefore, we can do the same thing as before and use a normal vector. Then this vector v minus p is always orthogonal to the normal vector n. 
Okay, then let's write this down. L is the set of all vectors V in R2 with the property that the inner product of N with V minus P is zero. So you should see the only thing we have to put in here is a normal vector N and the vector P. And then these two vectors describe the whole line. However, as before, we can simplify this even more and maybe we use X and Y again. So we have the set of all points x and y in R2. And then when we simplify the inner product, we have n1 times x plus n2 times y is equal to a constant we can call delta. And now this constant delta is just the inner product n with p. We say it's a constant because it does not depend on the numbers x and y, it's just a number that comes from the line L. So in summary, you should see with only three numbers, n1, n2, and delta, we can describe a whole line L in the plane. And indeed, this is not so surprising when we look at an example again. So maybe as before, we can build the connection to the graph of a function again. So in the case like this, you could say this is simply y is equal to 2x plus 5. Now of course, as before, we should write this as a set L again. So L is equal to the set of all points X and Y with this property here. And now you should see this here can be written in the same form as before. So for example, just bring 2X to the other side. So we have minus 2X plus Y is equal to 5, which then means N1 is minus 2, N2 is 1, and our delta is 5. Hence, our normal vector should be minus 2, 1. Also, delta should be 5, but now we can sketch the normal vector here. So when we put it on the line, it should roughly look like this. Okay, there we have it. Now I would say you know how to use normal vectors to describe lines in the plane. Moreover, I would say we are ready to talk about higher dimensional spaces now. And this is what we will do in the next video. Therefore, I really hope that I see you there. Have a nice day and bye.